I said from the beginning, this is going to the Supreme Court, I said from the beginning, I am willing to go to prison to settle this issue. I'm willing to do that. But I also know that the likelihood of me going to prison is relatively small because we are right on this issue. That's a guy who's definitely going to prison. <laughs> now, it's a good thing because apparently he said he's willing to do it. Um, but if you're wondering why he's definitely going to prison, it's because he was just convicted of contempt of Congress during the January 6th investigation. And he did say that he's gonna take it all the way to the Supreme Court. I'll add from my perspective, from my legal knowledge, there's no way on God's green earth that any appeal this man makes is going all the way to the Supreme Court. And I would assume he knows that. But NBC News reported on his conviction, so let's get into some of the facts of this. The jury deliberated for about four hours at a federal courthouse in Washington before it found Navarro guilty of two counts of contempt for refusing to testify before the House January 6th committee and turn over subpoenaed documents. Each count carries a minimum of 30 days and a maximum of one year in prison, in addition to a maximum fine of $100,000. And the article continues on. The verdict came after a four hour jury deliberation after it was read. Defense attorney Stanley Woodward moved for a mistrial saying that the jurors had taken an outdoor break near where protesters and media regularly gather outside the courthouse. And came back with a verdict shortly after. Judge Amit Mehta did not immediately rule, but said he would consider written arguments on the issue, which is pretty standard process. Now, the prosecutors argued that Navarro acted as if he were above the law, which he absolutely did, when he defied a subpoena for documents and a deposition from the White House January 6th committee. Now, <laughs> Peter Navarro's attorney, Stanley Woodward's arguments have been making me laugh since I was getting into them this morning. Um, but he said that the uh, government had failed to prove Navarro was guilty of criminal contempt of Congress, despite the fact that there was a subpoena and he didn't go, that there was a request for documents, he didn't request them. But NBC News reported uh, of Woodward's words, for the government to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt, it also has to prove that Dr. Navarro's failure to comply with the subpoena was not the result of accident, mistake or inadvertence. Woodward said, stressing the final three words repeatedly. The case is about those three words, he said, adding that the government had failed to tell jurors where Navarro was when he was supposed to have appeared for his deposition with the January 6th committee. And I really love this response. On rebuttal, prosecutor John Crabb said, who cares where he was? <laughs> what matters is where he wasn't, which is also, it's so funny to me that Woodward is highlighting that it couldn't have been a mistake accident or inadvertence because they didn't argue. And he says, highlighting those three words, they didn't argue that it was an accident or mistake or inadvertence. They argued that he didn't have to comply with the subpoena. So focusing on those three words is entirely irrelevant to the argument that they were making to the jury. And, and just to that point, Navarro, said he didn't appear because Trump told him not to do it and to assert executive privilege. And the funniest thing to me is that Navarro could have gone. He could have gone to the deposition and asserted, attempted at least, which I don't think that there's any actual legal standing for him to do so. But he could have attempted to assert executive privilege in person and maybe he wouldn't have been, <laughs> he wouldn't have been, indicted and then convicted of contempt of Congress, but he didn't do that. He just didn't show up. But of course, Donald Trump had to had to post this on his social media site, Truth Social and Peter Navarro's defense. He wrote, I can't believe that these fascist monsters capitalized for no reason have so viciously gone after the great Peter Navarro for defying the totally partisan January 6th unselect committee of political hacks and thugs who refused to go after crazy Nancy Pelosi. And the reasons she and the mayor of DC rejected 10,000 soldiers, which would have easily stopped any future security problem. His testimony wouldn't have mattered anyway because the committee quickly and illegally deleted and destroyed all evidence and findings. God, who knows what the hell that man is talking about at any given moment. But Peter Navarro joined his friend Steve Bannon, who should be also in jail right now, by the way, because he he was sentenced to four months in prison back in October for the exact same charges. He should have still still been in prison for what Trump pardoned him for doing. But I guess that's neither here nor there.
For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.